Prince Harry yesterday released a statement on the Archul website, which says he is working to tackle fake news. The statement said, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex co-founder of Archul joined a group of his colleagues who have been working together for more than half a year to release an ambitious report on tackling the growing mis- and disinformation problem in technology, media, and social media. The report gives a list of 15 recommendations for leaders to consider adopting across the public, private and non-profit sectors. Among the recommendations are the need for social media transparency and disclosure, as well as a new proposal regarding social media immunity. The statement comes as Associated Newspapers ANL, seek to overturn the decision that the publication of Meghan Markle TMS private letter to her father Thomas Markle, sent in August, 2018, was unlawful. The Duchess apologized to the Court of Appeal last week for allegedly forgetting email exchanges with her communications secretary, Jason Knauf, ahead of his meeting with the authors of Finding Freedom Trademark, an unofficial biography of the Sussexes. Mr. Knauf, in a witness statement, told the court Meghan TMS letter to her father was written in anticipation that it could be leaked. Should the Court of Appeal side with Airnel, a full trial would require Meghan and other senior royals to face cross-examination. Meghan and Harry are approaching two years since they upped sticks and crossed the Atlantic, initially moving to Canada before heading to California. Pod Save the Queen is hosted by Zoe Forsey and features Daily Mirror royal editor Russell Myers. Mr. Myers said in last week TMS episode, I still don TMT think they TM they found their feet. They TM re so far from doing that at the moment. They just seem to be fighting so many battles on so many levels. They TM re still trying to work out where they are. It TMS a tricky business. They TM re finding it quite hard on their own, I think. He added the ongoing court case has been a pretty bruising experience for the Sussexes. Meghan and Harry TMS Archul website leads with the tagline, Each of us can change our communities. All of us can change the world. They both have big plans to make a real difference in numerous projects, ranging from the Invictus Games to working with mental health charities. Mr. Myers said, Meghan and Harry kind of want to kick on with helping out the servicemen and women, talking about their big projects, talking about Archul. And the TM re being hampered from the court case which, one could argue, they are the masters of their own demise in that sense. He added, it TMLL be very interesting to see whether the real good work that they do is massively watered down because people will just go you know what, I TM they had enough of them trademark and they TMLL switch off. Royal expert Roya Nikhar said on ITV TMS Lorraine on Monday that there is frustration within the royal family at how this, the court case, is playing out. She claimed advisors, including the Queen TMS top lawyer, warned the Sussexes to think this through. Ms Nikhar added, if this goes all the way, think what could come out. Text messages, disclosure of all of that. Senior Judge Jeffrey Vaux said on Thursday, the final day of the three-day hearing, that judges would take time to consider our judgments in the usual way. Both sides of the argument would be examined, he said, with great care. To subscribe to Pod Save the Queen go to your normal podcast provider. Reports emerged that the Queen sprained her back prior to the event, forcing her son, Prince Charles to carry out duties on her behalf. Although the Queen had full intentions of attending the event, the 95-year-old monarch was said to be deeply disappointed at having to take the 11th-hour decision not to lead the nation TMS remembrance of its war dead. A royal aide added, It is obviously incredibly unfortunate timing, and nobody regrets the Queen TMS absence more than Her Majesty herself. She is deeply disappointed to miss the engagement which she regards as one of the most significant engagements of the year. But yesterday morning, less than two hours before she was due to arrive, a spokesman said she had suffered further ill health and could no longer attend. They stressed there was no connection with her recent hospitalization. The Queen is said to have watched the ceremony live on TV at home in Windsor. Boris Johnson told a Downing Street press conference, 
I know that everybody will be wanting to offer their best wishes to Her Majesty the Queen and I just wanted to reassure everybody by saying that I did see the Queen for an audience last week on Wednesday in Windsor and she TMS very well. The latest setback has led many in royal circles to believe that when she eventually feels well enough to return to more taxing duties, the Queen is unlikely to be overworked. One royal commentator said, I firmly believe the public won TMT see her out and about as much, that said, she will still be visible, carrying out less taxing engagements within palace walls. The expert added, the whole video and virtual engagement development as a result of COVID has given Palisades options they didn't TMT have before. But there will definitely be a change in pace. Another source went further, saying they did not believe the Queen would undertake events such as large-scale investitures again. Palace aides say nothing can be ruled out, and nothing can be ruled in, but concede that some key events such as handing out honours could be scaled back for her, perhaps with smaller sessions or one-on-ones in private. The Queen was not taken to hospital following the sprain to her back, and is continuing to rest at Windsor. It is understood that her doctors told her the pain was not conducive to the drive from Windsor to London and a long period of standing on her feet. The Queen was last seen in public on October 19, when she held a reception at Windsor for business leaders, tech entrepreneurs and governmental representatives. Among those present was Microsoft billionaire Bill Gates. The previous two engagements before that had seen the Queen using a walking stick in public for the first time. Royal biographer Penny Juna, said missing the Cenotaph event would be a blow for the Queen. She added, remembering the war dead is a very, very important part of her annual calendar. The analyst also said, but clearly she must follow the advice and get herself well. It TMS not surprising because she is 95. She concluded by saying, we're so used to seeing her out and about and looking years younger than she is that I think we've been lulled into thinking she can go on at this kind of pace forever. Clearly she can't. The Queen has only missed six other cenotaph ceremonies during her reign, on four occasions when she was on overseas visits. She was not present during the 1959 and 1963 services as she was pregnant with her two youngest children. The Queen has missed several other events, including the Festival of Remembrance at the Royal Albert Hall on Saturday evening. She was forced to cancel a two-day visit to Northern Ireland at the last minute three weeks ago after being ordered to rest by doctors following a slew of public engagements. Meghan and Harry spent time with Afghan schoolchildren on Thursday, as they visited Task Force Liberty at the joint base Maguire Dix Lakehurst in New Jersey. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex actively took part in a conversational English class. During their time with the children, they used markers to teach them the words for color and helped the pupils practice their English, listening to them saying sentences such as nice to meet you. Moreover, Meghan and Harry led a rendition of the song Heads, Shoulders, Knees and Toes. Speaking to the school children, they shared this song is one of their son's favorites as well, a spokesperson for the Sussexes said. Speaking about their day at the base, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's representative also said, they asked staff about common terms in Derry, and left every interaction with children and adults alike saying Tashaku, trademark which means thank you. Archie celebrated his second birthday in May, a month before the couple welcomed their daughter Lilibet Lily Diana. The family of four lives in Montecito, Santa Barbara, where the Sussexes moved during the summer of 2020. This isn't the first time Meghan and Harry share a few details about their son. Harry said, My son is now over a year and a half, he is hysterical, he TMS got the most amazing personality. He TMS already putting two, three words together, he TMS already singing songs. His first word was crocodile trademark, three syllables. During the same show, Harry also said his grandmother the Queen has often seen via video call Archie following the Sussexes' relocation to the US and even sent them as a Christmas present for Archie a waffle maker which the top deeply appreciated. In May, 
During the mental health series he co-created with Oprah Winfrey, The Me You Can't See, he also said, referring to his late mother Princess Diana, I got a photo of her in his nursery, and it was one of the first words that he said apart from Mama, Papa, it was then Grandma. Grandma Diana. It TMS the sweetest thing, but at the same time, it makes me really sad because she should be here. While at Task Force Liberty, Meghan and Harry also praised the teachers for their tireless efforts in supporting the pupils and reminded them to take care of themselves. The Duke and Duchess also spent time with women who recently arrived at the base. Task Force Liberty is currently home to 10,000 Afghan refugees who fled their homeland in recent months following the return to power of the Taliban in mid-August. They are being provided temporary housing, medical screening and education by the U.S. Department of Defense. Earlier this week, it was reported Meghan and Harry had hosted a lunch for some of the military personnel and their family living at the air base in Burlington County. This visit took place on Remembrance Day, which falls on the same day of Veterans Day in the U.S. which celebrates all living former service personnel for their effort. A spokesperson for Meghan and Harry said the couple met with members of all six branches of the U.S. military during their visit. Their chats, the representative added, were focused on topics close to the Sussex's heart mental health and the importance of community. Harry marked this visit saying, as we honor and reflect on Remembrance Day in the UK, which shares a date with Veterans Day here in the US, my hope is for all of us to continue to support the well-being and recognize the value of our troops, veterans, and the entire military and service family. We and they are better for it.